Okay, so we're going to go forward to the introduction of Bale de Vujibushan. Last video we are talking about how we're studying the commentary of Bale de Vujibushan, known as the Govinda Basya commentary, inspired by Govinda Dev himself, who is established by Rup Goswami. This Govinda Dev came from Vrindavan, from, established by Rup Goswami. Later he went to Jaipur. So this commentary is connected to Srila Rup Goswami, who himself is the foremost of the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Manahubistam Stapitam Jaina Bhutalim. He established the Manubhishta, the real desire and heart's desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he revealed Sri Govinda Dev. So then Govinda Dev went to Jaipur, and under the direction and inspiration of Sri Govinda Dev, Valade Vijabhushan, composed the Govinda Basya commentary. So in the beginning of his Govinda Basya commentary, Valade Vijabhushan gave a beautiful sloka in his introduction that sets up the premise. Satyam jnanam anantam brahma shivadi stutam bhajad rupam govindam tam achintyam hetum adosam namashyamaha. This is his introductory verse. Uh, if you like, we can learn it. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of verses to learn. <laughs> so this is a nice verse. But the basic subject is important. <clears throat> He's establishing his thesis at the beginning, his point of view. Satyam jnanam anantam. Satya means absolute truth, pure truth. Jnanam means divine knowledge. Ananta means what is unlimited, immeasurable. So this is referring, these are three adjectives re describing the nature of the absolute truth. Govinda. Govindam tam achintyam. This is also establishing that this commentary is based on Mahaprabhu's achintya beda beda tattva. So he's saying first that who is that Govinda? That Govinda is Satyam. These are adjectives describing the reality of Govinda. So he is Satyam, he is absolute truth. He is Jnanam, he is Chit Shakti. Chit means he is consciousness personified, the supreme consciousness. And this is backed up by the Upanishads. There's a verse, Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chitananam Eko Bahunam Yo Vidati Kamam from the Upanishads says that he is the supreme eternal amongst all the eternals. He is the original consciousness among all the different minute consciousness. And then he is Anantam. That's why one of his expansions or manifestations is Ananta Dev, at the, who is holding up all the cosmic creation. He is the basis of all the cosmic creation. That is Anantam. So that is Govinda. And this goes along with our Sampradaya is also the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, right? So in this Introduction, Baladev Vijayabhush, and you can say he's offering his homage to Lord Brahma also, because Lord Brahma famously wrote the Govinda Stotram, which is the Brahma Sanghita. Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachidananda Vigraha Anadir Adi Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. So his Govinda Bhas is also showing his connection to this Sampradaya of the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. That's why he is also um, using this term. Right? So that Govinda is Satyam Jnanam Anantam and then he is worshipped by Brahma and Shiva and all the other demigods, Brahma, Shiva, Adi, Rupam. So all the different devas are worshipping that original Lord Govinda. So that's showing that Govinda is not just Lord Brahma himself. There's the pastime where he, he showed through this pastime that Govinda is the absolute truth because he was thinking some people will have doubt. Why did, why did Brahma steal the calves and steal the boys? And some people don't want to discuss this who are in the Brahma Sampradaya because it looks like Brahma came under illusion. But from one understanding, we can see that Guru did this, Brahma did this, he is our Adi Guru. He did this as a lesson for us, for those people who would say, Oh, Govinda, he's just a cowherd boy. He is like an incarnation of Vishnu, maybe. Or he's empowered, but he's not the absolute truth. But here, Govinda, Baladev Vijayabhushan is saying, Brahma, Shiva, Adi, Rupam, that all the devas are worshipping him. And Brahma in the pastime of Brahma Vimohan Lila showed through this pastime that Govinda is the Absolute. Because even the Brahma, the son of Vishnu, who was the secondary creator, Vishnu is the original creator, and then by his power, it's like he gave him the ingredients, and then Brahma combined the ingredients. So like, that's why Brahma is called the secondary creator. First creator is God. But then, you know, it's like God created all the ingredients, and then Brahma made some different preparations. Who made the, who is the creator? Who made the rice or the person who boiled the rice? 
not even boiled, but like the person who made the rice and the milk or the person who boiled it together and made sweet rice. God created the rice, God created the milk, God created the sugar. And then Brahma boiled it together and made kheer. But God also created Brahma. Brahma appeared from the navel of the Lord in the lotus flower. So he also created, that's why in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says this verse that, uh, about that Brahma, Havir, the Yagya is Brahma, the ingredients are Brahma, the performer is Brahma. Everything is coming from that same absolute truth. So that original truth is the original creator. That is Govinda, Satyam Gyana Manantam. Brahma, Shiva, they are not the same as Govinda or Krishna. This is being established in the first introduction by Baladavidu Bhushan. And that's the second Nama Parad, offense to the holy name of Krishna, is to think that Brahma, Shiva and other gods are on an equal standing with Sri Govinda. They are his vibhutis, manifestations of his opulences and powers, but they're not on his same level. So that's what, in each line, Baladavidu Bhushan is establishing some different important thesis in his introduction. This is the first verse in his introduction, that's why it's important. Satyam Jnana Manantam, this is Govinda. Then next line is Brahma, Shiva and all the other gods are worshipping him. Some people think Brahma is God, some people think Shiva is God. The different Puranas, some Puranas they glorify Agni Dev or Indra as supreme. But now he's saying no, Govinda is supreme, all the other demigods headed by Brahma, Shiva worship him. And then the third line is talking, we're, we're glorifying that transcendental Govinda and meditating upon him. So this is how he begins his Vedanta Sutra.